Super R-Type came out on September 1991 after the Super Nintendo system launched in August 1990. But did you know the game was a port of R-Type 2, the arcade game? In this video, we're going to compare the arcade of R-Type 2 with the Super Nintendo version and see how it compares. I'm going to compare the presentation, graphics, and soundtrack. Before I start this video, if you see this speaker icon on any of the two screens, it means the sound is coming from the that screen only. The Super Nintendo title screen are very similar and using the same font style. Upon starting the game, you were introduced to game's introduction. The arcade had a 3D style intro while the Super Nintendo has a side-scrolling style intro. The first level is a brand new original level on the Super Nintendo, while the arcade does not have this level. The first thing you will notice is the thumping music on the Super Nintendo version. Take a listen. While it sounds really good it is not an original composition, it is a remix of R-Type arcade title screen. Take a listen. Once you get to the end of stage 1, you will be greeted with the boss. This boss is similar to stage 5 boss from R-Type arcade. The music on the stage boss is also similar to the music on the stage 5 boss on R-Type arcade. Take a listen. Starting in Stage 2 on the Super Nintendo, this is Stage 1 in the arcade. You start off in space and make your way inside the fortress. Graphically the Super Nintendo holds up well with the arcade, but the arcade does have more colors. The Super Nintendo version displays 256 colors on screen simultaneous while the arcade displays 512 colors on screen simultaneous. The background on the Super Nintendo is darker while the arcade background is brighter. There is a lot of slowdown in the Super Nintendo version. The 3.57 MHz CPU on the Super Nintendo was slow compared to Irem's 8 MHz CPU on M82 arcade hardware. The stage layout is very similar to the arcade version with minor adjustment. The enemies are mostly similar to the arcade version. Once you reach the end of the level on the Super Nintendo version, it will load to the boss room while the arcade is a seamless transition. Both bosses are identical, but the arcade has better animation that is missing on the Super Nintendo version. The boss music is different from the arcade on the Super Nintendo. Take a listen. Stage 3, takes place inside a cavern. On the Super Nintendo version the cavern is darker. In the arcade, the cavern is lighter and flooded with water. They both have waterfalls. Enemies are very similar. When it comes to the music the arcade version doesn't compare to the Super Nintendo version. Take a listen. Midway through the level, you will encounter a mini-boss. They both look different from each other. When you get to the stage boss, they are also different from each other. The music again is different from the arcade. Take a listen. Stage 4 takes you head-to-head -head with a huge mothership, both games have different music, take a listen. The level design on both are very different from each other, the Super Nintendo version is completely pitch black with lighting striking in the background, while the arcade version has a nice background of a city with clouds striking in the background, 
The arcade version also has a long bridge in the foreground. The ship design looks slightly different on the Super Nintendo versus the arcade. The Super Nintendo version you fight one huge interconnected ship while on the arcade you fight two different ships that are guarding the boss. On the Super Nintendo version to get to the boss, you have to enter the mothership through the bottom, the arcade you just get past those two big motherships to get to the boss. The two bosses are completely different from each other. The boss music repeats from the previous level on both games so I will not be posting a sample from now on. In stage 5, the terrain constantly shifts around, both versions have the same level design but the colors are different. The Super Nintendo level is darker, and the color palette is a lot better than the arcade's bland color palette. The music on both are completely different but I do prefer the arcade a little more. Take a listen. Most of the enemies are the same and the level design is almost identical to each other. This level gets harder with a lot of enemies coming at you. Once you reach the boss, they are both identical. There is a lot of slowdown on the Super Nintendo version, but it helps maneuvering through the level. Stage 6 on the Super Nintendo version is a recycling factory but also a Bido graveyard where the remains of the defeated enemies are collected and recycled. Elevators and belt conveyors are seen through the facility. The arcade version is called Additional Base, it looks like you're inside a huge holding facility of ship's parts. There are enemies that dump metal computer equipment to block your path. Doesn't look nothing like the junkyard scrap on the Super Nintendo level. The Super Nintendo like always has a darker background. When it comes to the music on both versions, the arcade version wins. It's creepy and suspenseful versus the Super Nintendo laid-back composition. Take a listen. When you make it to the end of the level, you are treated with two different looking bosses. After you defeat the bosses you are on your way to the last level of the game. Stage 7 on the Super Nintendo or Stage 6 on the arcade is your final destination to beat the game. The music on both are different again, take a listen. This level is called the Bido Empire, which is made out of alien organism. Your last mission is to rescue your comrades they have been taking hostage. Once you get to the last boss, they are identical to each other. It's an alien that has a fetus that you must kill. You can see your comrades are attached to the tentacles. After you kill it you must escape the explosive level. While you're escaping the explosion, you can see the debris on the arcade version being destroyed by the explosion. There is slowdown on this section of the arcade. On the Super Nintendo version there's a lot of slowdown and it's missing the animation from the arcade. Once you get to the end, you must make your way out by using your lasers. After that you're done. My name is Planalysis and thank you for watching this video. Please tap the like button and I'll see you in the next video.